It's crucial that today the church, the Christian church, and all Christians, we must live a life filled with the Holy Spirit. It's important to live a life filled with the Holy Spirit because of the challenges that we have in the world today. And when I mean filled with the Holy Spirit, I don't mean just only to have the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit that is sometimes uh, speaking in tongues or uh, any other special gift, but to have a life full of the leading of the Holy Spirit. I, these days, listen too much to uh, Ravi Zechariah, who is one of the apologetics uh, representative today in Christianity. And even though he never mentioned about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, or he didn't preach about the Holy Spirit in his uh, lecture, but what I hear from his uh, sermons and congress and, and, and forums that he has, he is a person who has been prepared for years to be used by the Holy Spirit in order to clarify and to explain in a reasonable way our faith to many people who have abandoned the faith and those who have been criticized in the Christian life and who doesn't know anything about God because of the ignorance of the members of church who only try to live a life full of the Spirit in pursuing the gift of the Spirit but not defending the ministry of the Holy Spirit with reasonable words. And this and that's the, 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 the spot that we have left empty in this society that today media and any kind of uh, non-Christian circle, they think that Christians today are ignorant because they believe in God. Christians are ignorant because they believe that there is, there is a, a, a great designer who created all the universe in the way that is created and who also who believe in the Bible as the supreme and inherent word of God. It's a, it's, it's a tendency this day to think that Christians are now full in this world because we just believe in God and we don't believe in other science uh, issues and, and arts and other things that the world teach in these days, universities, academies, and in secular world, uh, medias. What is the reason for that? Because the church has left an empty place, the place of knowledge, the place of knowing God's word and explaining to the world why we believe what we believe. We started this year this campaign, we are more than conquerors for the faith that we have. But can we explain what kind of faith we have? We need to be prepared. Peter will say, be ready for the time when you have to give an account of your faith. But we just try to find in churches uh, a place of refugee. The church is not a place of refugee. The church is not a place that we are escaping from the war to try to feel that we are at home and we hear speaking tongues, we just fall down on the, on the floor or try to, to, to seek for any special supernatural manifestation of the spirit life. But outside of the church, we cannot explain our faith to the world in the way that they can understand why we believe what we believe and what is the testimony of our faith. On the other hand, we also need to expect to live a sovereign, supernatural life to live a life filled with the Spirit in a way that nobody can explain, even us. Have you prayed to God to lead you and to fill your life with His Spirit that you can live a filled Spirit life that everything that happens every day in your life cannot be explained in human terms? It's an unspeakable work of God that we cannot explain. It's an unspeakable love, unspeakable joy. It's an unspeakable grace that we experience every day. Do you have that kind of prayer? Do you have that kind of wish? I'm praying for that. I want, I'm praying to be sensitive of the Holy Spirit. I pray to be sensitive of God's manifestation in, in my life, that I can live a supernatural life every day, that people can see what I'm doing is not because I'm smart, because I'm handsome, or because I'm, I'm clever, or because I, I, I'm wise, or because I have resources, materials, or money, but because God is leading the way. Because God is living in me, and because His favor is in me, and He opens the door when the doors are closed, He makes a way that there is no way, and He brings sins when we don't expect to have any other help from outside of our life. We need to be filled with the Spirit every day as we use the power of the Holy Spirit every day in our life. As I said the last week, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and happen once in our life. But the filled spirit life must be 
recharge it every day. It's like you are empty your tank of gasoline. And the gasoline tank light up this red line and say, empty, empty, empty. Fill me again. Fill me again with the Spirit. You need to be sensitive that your spiritual tank every day is lacking oil. The Spirit oil. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that you don't have the Holy Spirit. The problem, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life is no expressed or is not revealed in front of your eyes. Or you are not sensitive about that, even though it's happening. You think that everything that happened is because you made things happen. You know, because the favor of God was in, in front of you working and the angels of the Lord were making the way for you. Can you imagine a, a life that you can see Jesus with you? Imagine that you are waking up every day. The first thing that you see is Jesus just sitting on your bed and greeting you every morning and say, Good morning. Did you sleep well? What would you say to Jesus if you can see Jesus every day standing in front of your bed? And you will ask, Jesus, is that you? Yes, I am. Are you sure? Yes, I am who I am. And Jesus will say, okay, come on. Dress on and let's have breakfast. And let's be ready for a new day. What would you do if Jesus is with you in your daily life? He goes with you to your marketplace. He goes with you to your school. He goes with you wherever you go. And you can see him. And then you get into your job and you get into your school and then you have this uh, problem person in you. It could be a teacher, it could be a boss, it could be a co-worker, it could be someone else. And then you have to face this person again. And you don't want to go inside. And Jesus is with you and you say, Jesus, maybe you should go to another place or we should turn back. And Jesus said to you, hey, it's okay. You are going with me. But Jesus, you know that person and I, we are not getting each other. And he said, don't worry. I'm with you. And you enter there and, and, and Jesus touched that person and that person changed his attitude towards you. And one person who was yesterday your enemy now is blessing you. Imagine that you have that project and you, did, you couldn't finish because you don't have enough resources and then, oh Jesus, I have a day line today. I had to present this report. I had to present this project. I had to make this business. I had to sign this contract. What can I do? I don't have much time. I didn't prepare well. And Jesus said, don't worry. You're going to have a success in that project. You're going to have that that agreement today. You're going to have that sign. You're going to have that approval. You're going to finish this business well today. I'm with you. What would be your days? You can see that every day in Jesus just being your partner. It would be wonderful, right? It would be amazing and you will have to, you, you will like to finish that time or let Jesus go out from your life anymore. Then my question is, why we don't do the same with the Holy Spirit? Why the Holy Spirit have less power than Jesus? Why the Holy Spirit is not revealing in, our, in front of our eyes that He is walking with us, He is with us everywhere, and we are making business, studying, working, relation, having a relationship with people, having a meal at home with family, walking on the street, playing with children, playing with, 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 our, with our friends, and He's there. But we don't see Him. He's there. What is the difference? between seeing Jesus personally and having the Holy Spirit today with us. Jesus promised that he had to go in order to send the Holy Spirit. He said, it's better for, for you, for me to go to the Father and send in my Father's name the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father. No, Jesus, keep his promise. He sent the Holy Spirit. He prayed to the Father and the Father sent the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit came on the Pentecost day. Now the Holy Spirit is here working for the church, helping the church, filling the church. And empowering the church to be a witness to the end of the earth. We need to come back again to the beginning of our faith. And the beginning of the Christian faith starts here in the Pentecost day. We are no Jews. We are not following a tradition. We are Gentiles. We have received the gospel by those who went over the limits of the tradition and territories. And they... Bless all the families of the world because that was the promise that God gave in the Old, Testament, the Old Testament to Abraham first. That all the nations and all the families of the world will be blessed through him. And by adoption, we are now children of God. God have to put who, we who were a branch, Sylvester, wild branch, into this tree of God 
this tree of the family of God, and now we are children of Abraham, the father of faith. And we have received the promise that the Holy Spirit gave to the prophets, that in the last days, all will receive the Holy Spirit and will have dreams to dreams, visions to see, and prophesy. These promises are available for us today, the Gentiles, the Christian church, the universal church. Why we don't take those promises today? Why we don't, again, revive our faith, going back to the beginning when we were baptized with the Holy Spirit. As we started the book of Acts, I say the last week, we need to understand these four chapters is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Are the Acts, not of the apostles, but it's the Acts of the Spirit. And we started last week saying that the first chapter was the ministry of patience. The Holy Spirit say to the church, wait here, pray here, until the Holy Spirit comes and empower you to be the witness to the end of the year. Now in chapter 2, we have to understand that the Holy Spirit is here giving us the power to testify, to preach to the end of the world. And with this power, we can go to all people to tell the wonders of God. Chapter 3 is about the ministry of power. We can see the miracles flowing through his church. And it should flow to us. That's the promise of Jesus in Luke chapter 24. He said, and you will make miracles. You will bring signs more than I did, said Jesus. In other words, we will make more miracles than Jesus did when he was in earth. How? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. And chapter 4, we will see that the Holy Spirit is ministering the church to persevere, to endure during the hard time of persecution, the time when we have to even give our life for the sake of God. But in this chapter 2, we have to understand that when the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost Day, He gave to the church the ability to do God's will and to testify to the world about the love and the power of God. We receive the DNA of the Holy Spirit. Only the church, the Christian church, has the Holy Spirit. Nobody else. No other institution in the world. No other religion in the world have the Holy Spirit. Only the Christian church have the Holy Spirit. Here in Korea, in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, in America, South America, everywhere. Only the Christian church, the universal church, the body of Christ, has the DNA of the Holy Spirit and has the Holy Spirit dwelling in it. Everything that the church needed to be born, God put it in that day on Pentecost Day when the church was born. And everything that we need for our spiritual life today was put in, and it, in the first day when the, the Holy Spirit came to the church. So we, as believers, now have this spiritual ability to testify to the end of the world what we had heard and seen and learned from the Holy Spirit. Now, do we have the testimony today? How can we have that testimony? You, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. As it happened in the Pentecost day when the church received the Holy Spirit, we need this miracle of the dwelling and empowering of the Holy Spirit. Do you want that? Are you thirsty for that? Are you hungry for that? I'm thirsty and hungry for that. I want to see my life in power. I want to see my life with the favor of God. I want to walk and, 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 and hear the people that are telling me, I don't know why, but when you came to this room, something has changed. The atmosphere has changed. I want to change my life. I want to, I want to be another person. I, want to be, I don't want to be angry every day. I don't want to be uh, 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 stressed or irritated because of the problems of my life. I want to be a, a person filled with the Holy Spirit that I can show to the world love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, self-control. That's what I want. That's my prayer every day. We need the Pentecost miracle. On Pentecost Day, three miracles happened. According to the scripture we just read today, there were a sound like a strong blowing wind. That was the first miracle. The miracle that people experienced the power of changing life. The power of a life change. We need this miracle in our life. We need to be aware that the Holy Spirit is with us so we can change our life. We don't have power in us to be a good person. But if God is with us, Emmanuel, the Holy Spirit is with us, the gift of, of Jesus to us, to his church, then we can change into another person. We need to experience also the second miracle. Because in, in verse 3, we see that, that in that day, tons of fire, or looks like tons of fire, resting on people. In other words, they feel warm. They feel excited. They feel something supernatural coming into their life. But today's church, they don't feel that. And what is that? What is that fire? In other words, the church have extinguished the passion. The passion to live the Christian life. 
Do you have still passion for Jesus? Do you have still passion for evangelize? Do you have still passion for loving your church, take care of your church, spend time with your church, and just be with other Christians and, and, and study the Bible and pray and, and looking for more Christian meetings and, and try to serve the Lord as much as you can and go to, to the streets and try to, to bring more people to church? Do you ha still have that passion? We need a revival today. We need to revive our life because we are focused so much on other things and we don't remember who we are, what we are, and who is with us. Because we don't see Jesus doesn't mean that Jesus is not with us. His spirit is with us. And we need to open our eyes, have a revival in our life, and start to live the, the spirit feel alive. That means a life that walks with God. We need the third miracle of Pentecost say today. Verse 4 said that they were speaking in different language. In other words, People spoke about the wonders of God for the first time that everybody could understand. We need to be ready to speak about the wonders of God. And you have to remember how you became Christian or how you be aware of your Christianity. Not because you were born in a Christian family doesn't mean you don't have a revival or you have a turning point to God. Everybody had that point. If you don't have that point, you have to start to search for that point in your life that you can have a testimony to people who, like you, do not know Jesus or want to know Jesus and you your experience and through your experience people will touch other people's life and they will become Christian like you have become Christian. We need that revival. We need that passion. We need that experience in our life. Without that we are having just a fake Christian life. Or like this popular song this day, we have a fake love. Why? Because we are living a fantasy. We are not living the real life that Christians should live. A life filled with the Spirit. The commandment of the Spirit in His Word through the teaching of the Apostle Paul is to don stiffly the Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, according to the Amplified Version, says, Do not quench or subdue or be unresponsive to the working of and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Another version of the Bible says that we grieve the Spirit. In other words, we oppose the Spirit by deliberating singing against the will of God. Singing against God. Because of our sin. And sin is not just disobey God. Because James will say in his letter that if you know how to do good and you don't do it, that is sin too. So we have grieved the Holy Spirit because we disobey God or we do not do what we have to do. We quench the Spirit. In other words, we discreet others in the ministry of God. We don't are aware what the Spirit is doing today. My interest as a pastor is not that you come today and meet me, a preacher in English. But my interest as a pastor is that you come here and meet God here. Even though you understand English or not, you meet God here in this worship and you receive the, fill, the fullness of the Holy Spirit and you go out of this door, fill it with the Holy Spirit to do God's will. That's my job. And if I do that job, then my job is failing. And a failure as a minister, as a pastor. The reason that I'm here is that you receive the Holy Spirit and live a life filled with the Holy Spirit and you testify about what the Holy Spirit is doing to you. Wonderful sins. The wonders of God in your life. That people uh, will say, hey, how did you get that? How did how'd you receive that? How everything is working for you and it's not working for us. You will say, because God is with me. The Spirit of God is with me. And I can explain you how this happened. I just know that this happened because... I'm with God, and God is with me. We need the, fill, the fullness and fill of the Holy Spirit every day of our life. Fill it with the Holy Spirit, we could be explaining this word. Spirit-filled souls are a place for God. They love with a love that glows. They serve with a faith that kindles. They serve with a devotion that consumes. They hate sin with furnaces that burns. They rejoice with a joy that radiates. And love is perfect in the fire of God. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit again. We need the passion of the Holy Spirit again in us so we can testify the wonders of God to the end of the world. It doesn't matter we are here in Korea, in America, or everywhere God sent us. We need to testify about the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and search and seek for a revival in our life first and then in our church. How we do that? First, we have to pray for God's power. Yes, always begin with prayer. There's no other way. Pray is the key that opens all the door of heaven and earth. Heaven is a place where we can access to prayer. 
And with the power of prayer, we can receive the power of God. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 40, that the, the apostles, the disciples, they were in the number 120. They continually met together to pray as a group with one purpose in mind. What is the purpose of our prayer? We just come to church to pray for ourselves. We pray that our church can be kind of filled with spirit church. That this church won't be another church, but will be the church, the body of Christ, the universal church. When people come, will receive the spirit of God and they will receive salvation and they will testify about the new life in Christ. Second, we need to speak everybody's language. This four in chapter two, again, according to the new uh, the Bible says that they all began to speak different languages as the Spirit gave each of them the power to express themselves. We need to speak everybody's language. How we can speak everybody's language? We need to speak about what people can understand in terms that people can understand. If you are a teacher, you have to speak to another teacher in terms that teachers can understand about the wonders of God. If you are a student, you have to speak the student language that other students can understand the wonders of God. If you are a CEO, if you are a, a, a professional or any person in this world, if you are a housewife, you will talk with other housewives about the wonders of God. So we, you will bring more people to Christ and the church will grow and we fill it with the Holy Spirit and miracles will happen. And the church will also persevere in the faith until the end of the year. That's what we need today in church. But we have lost the characteristics of the church, the DNA of the church. The spiritual characteristics of the church is that the church is spiritual in the first place. It's a spiritual body. It's not a physical body. It's not a material body. It's not a system. It's not an institution. It's not a business. The church needs to be international in membership. In other words, multiracial, multilingual, multicultural. And you have to gradually spend their territory. We are here to stand in the kingdom of God. But we are not preaching like Jesus preached. Repent for the kingdom of God is here anymore. You know that church is the only place where people can freely express that they are sinners. Place should be the only place in the world that we are free to say, I'm a sinner, you are a sinner. And nobody get offended. Why? Because we cannot say that anymore outside. Unless we receive the power of the Holy Spirit and testify boldly to all kind of authority. And that's what we need to do. Like the Apostle Paul who went first to every place he put his feet to go first to the authorities, go to the synagogues, the religious leaders, and explain first to them in a, re in a reasonable way what is the gospel, why they need the gospel, who is Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit came on him, and then miracles happen. We cannot see miracles and we don't put our hands, our feet on the business of evangelizing people. We need this ability to communicate to others, to speak everybody's language. Verse 11 said, all of us hear them speaking in our own language about the great things that God has done. And every version says, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. So, we need to pray first. Second, to speak everybody's language. That we can bring everybody to church. And to fan into the flame of the spirit fire. Paul will say to Timothy before he departed. In the second of his letter, he say, according to the Amplified Version, that is why I remind you, speaking to Timothy, to find into play the gracious gift of God, that inner fire, the special endowment which is in you through the laying of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. When we became Christian, when we became members of a church, we received the gift of God, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter said in Chapter 2, verse 37, 38, when the Jews heard about his sermon, brothers, speaking to Peter and to all the disciples, what shall we do? And Peter answered, representative of others, repent and believe in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sin. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of God. That is the Holy Spirit. We need to Come back to God. Turn back to God in repentance. Repentance means to come back again, to change our course, our direction, and back to God. And believe. Because it's by faith that we are saved. And it's by faith that we are born again. And it's by faith that we will conquer the world. And then we will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And every day the filling of the Holy Spirit to minister to the world. 
to finish my message today. What kind of fire for God do you have? What kind of passion or love for God do you have? Is your love and fire for God has been extinguished because of the waves and the currents of this war? You need a revival today. You need to rebuild the altar of your heart to God. In Chronicles chapter 21, verse 26, 26 the Bible said that David, David, the King David, he built an altar to the Lord. There, he sacrificed bar offerings and fellow offerings. And he called on the Lord. He called the name of the Lord. And the Lord answered him with fire from heaven on the altar of bar offering. You need to make a bar offering today. Bar offering today is to put, again, your heart on fire. Your heart is supposed to God and say, God, I need more passion. I need fire in my life. I need passion in my life to serve you again, to testify about you again. Because now my altar is without fire. Fire will come to you. And will come like came in the Old Testament. You don't need to be a special person. You don't need to be even a pastor. Even pastor, we don't have that fire anymore. But we need to pray like the people in the, in the, in the Bible prayer. For fire. Elijah, he prayed for fire. After he rebuilt the altar of Israel, he chose stones representing the tribe of Israel, each stone for each tribe. And then he put on it an holocaust. And then he prayed for fire. After hours, that other team, other people who were no believers, no Christian, no people of God, they were praying to a Baal, a deity. Of that society, that world. Today people are worshiping God's I are looking for fire that is passion, that is talent, that is energy from many ways, any kind of religion. Even though people they say that they don't believe in God, people today are more spiritual than ever. Even though the people say I'm atheist, they are looking for a spiritual power from any other way, in any other place except Christianity. So we need to pray like Elijah and say, God. You don't hear those prayers. You don't give fire to them. Give us the fire that we need. Your church. Your people. And then we can receive the promise of God. Hosea promised to the church today. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has endured us, but he will blind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us that we may live in his presence. This promise was fulfilled when Jesus came to the world. Jesus died on the cross. And two days, the church experienced our revival. On the third day, when Jesus resurrected, the church was restored. Is your life living a Friday, Good Friday, or an Easter? Or you are in the middle, a Saturday, when everything is confused? If you are confused about your life, let me tell you that you need a revival today. You need the fire of the Spirit today. You need to wake up and be alive for God. Don't let the distraction of this world take the focus of what you have been created for other sins that will extinguish your passion and your love for God. Remember the promise of the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all the rest things that you want in this world will be added to you for justice. But don't try to... Look for the things that you think is justice for you and lost the kingdom of God. Seek for a revival. Seek for the kingdom of God today and be blessed this week and the rest of your life in Jesus' name.